Hi, I'm Matt. And I'm Tom. And this is The Park Bench. And you will have gathered from the title of this video uh, that, 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 that there is not the payoff you might hope in there. And rather than do the clickbait headline of Tom interviewed Edward Snowden, I thought I'd put the punchline in the title and tell you that no, there is no video of me interviewing Edward Snowden. If a Tom Scott interviews Edward Snowden in the woods and there's no video evidence, does this train of thought lead to anything funny? <laughs> Apparently, because I'm laughing. Um, so I do uh, conference uh, talks. Conference. Uh, conference. Oh, they're not in on that in joke. No, now you are. Conference. The conference. <laughs> um, I do. Uh, I, I do speaking gigs, uh, explaining the internet and YouTube to corporate people, uh, and occasionally I do master of ceremonies. Jobs. MC. And, and MC, no, Tom Scott. Not, not that not that kind of MC. Nah, not that. Not that kind of MC. Uh, the kind of MC that involves wearing a suit and standing on stage and introducing people. We're not street, we're boulevard. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> That's so true. Um, I, did, I got three days uh, at a conference called World Hosting Days, which is the, okay. the conference for the hosting industry, uh, as the MC. Which is you know, good. You're still giggling at me introducing in a, in a in a rap style, aren't you? Yes. yes. Right. Okay. Get it out of your system. Get it. Tank flow, bus, what? Jam nitty gritty. You're at the hosting conference, and I'm Tom Scott. <laughs> yeah. Not not quite. Not quite. I, I had a script. It's fine. Um, it was a lovely gig, and though, so it's mostly um, people from the industry talking to the industry. And my job is to go on stage, introduce them, get off stage. That's it. I mean, my job is to keep the show together. But there are a few interesting talks in there. Um, one was uh, Mark Shuttleworth. Oh, he's the man that went to space and paid a lot of money to do it and also something to do with Linux? Yeah, he, he founded the Ubuntu Foundation um, and thought the security company. And yes, was, was one of the first space tourists. Gave, gave a wonderful talk. There was the former, uh, direct, sorry, former general counsel for the NSA who immediately followed him. And it turns out that they sort of they uh, they know each other. Okay. So Mark Shuttleworth uh, ended his talk with a few words, uh, deliberately not sabotaging. That's much too strong a word, but deliberately saying the guy that's on next, uh, who is here to talk about how government should have some access to data. I disagree with him. I'm good friends with him, but I disagree with him, and here's why. And uh, I can see the, <laughs> the the guy from the NSA on the side going, <laughs> I think yes, I think it's clearly fine. Um, the closing talk was Buzz Aldrin. Ooh, yes. And again, the reason I don't have a video of any of this is because it was a bloody expensive conference and it is a, a perk of the of paying for the attendee or paying for sponsoring it that you get to go and you get exclusive access yeah. to these. The, the whole point of the conference is you go to it rather than you watch it later on. The yes. Oh, and tell you what, they, the sponsors really like this conference because it is held in a theme park. Ooh. Um, which has two things. First of all, it's in a damn theme park. And, hello. Um, dogs. Um, it's held in a theme park. So first of all, it's in a theme park. My, my first, so as, as the first day of the conference, first, first morning of the conference closes, I'm on stage. So, right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please go to the, the restaurant that's on your badge so we can make sure everyone's catered for. And if you'd like to avoid the long lunch lines, uh, why not go on the roller coasters before lunch? <laughs> That is one hell of a, yeah. Because yeah. most conferences will just have like yeah. uh, some fizzy fizzy yeah. alcohol and this. Yeah, no, this, or... this was proper catering. They, it was essentially a test. So the theme park is weird. Yeah. Do you know about Europa Park? Oh, go on. <laughs> There's Germany, isn't it? Yeah, but border, border, border of Germany, Germany, and Germany and France. Um, and you've been to Disney World, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. This seems like. A couple of years ago. This seems like someone who went to Disney World and went, I'm having one of those. They have the geodesic dome from Epcot. I saw your... You, yeah. Did you Instagram that? Yeah, I, Instagram I, I that. I saw a picture of that. It looks like that. It's... What do yeah. they call it? Ep Epcot. Yeah. <laughs> it's got a roller coaster inside instead of the actual rides. But it's got a monorail. It's got a pirate's little boat ride thing. Like pirates of the Caribbean? No, Piraten in Batavia, which is near the Caribbean. <laughs> <laughs> um, their mascot is a mouse. It's called Euro Mouse. Is <laughs> it have big ears? Well, it's a mouse, so yeah. Um, oh, that's a good point. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so it's a, it's at a theme park. It's a lovely theme park, by the way. I'm not, I'm not dissing the theme park. It's massive. It's got enormous roller coasters that Disney doesn't have because it's owned by someone who owns a theme park ride company now. Okay. And they used it as a test bed. Where was I going with this? Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm rambling here. Lunch talks. Buzz Aldrin. <laughs> clunk, 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 clunk. There we go. Three, three tangents deep. 
But you are you were Buzz Aldrin. Yeah. I uh, closed the conference talking to Buzz Aldrin via live video link. Oh, you interviewed him? Yeah, I actually, it was an interview. Um, yeah, I just casually went to a theme park and an chatted interview. with Buzz f***ing Aldrin. Yeah, yeah. Good, good self-censoring there, it's good. <laughs> um, who is obsessed with Mars. He is wearing uh, um, American flag uh, braces, we'd call them, suspenders the Americans would call them, because Buzz Aldrin wearing suspenders means something very different in Britain. Um, <laughs> Please, please, don't, please don't do that. Please, please don't do that. Um, and he has got a t-shirt that just says, get your ass to Mars on it. <laughs> no other parts for you, buddy. Uh, <laughs> his, his, current, uh, his current obsession is trying to get humanity back to the moon, back to Mars. I, I would be frustrated if I'd been to the moon and yes. then no one else cared. Yes. So Edward Snow. I realise, I realise <laughs> that this is essentially... Buzz Aldrin, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Edward Snow. <laughs> this is essentially a Ronnie Corbett monologue in that I'm starting... In, <laughs> in that I'm starting from a promise. And I will get there, but I will take a lot of tangents on the way. <laughs> Feel free to make this a dialogue, Matt, because at this point I am just barrelling down the camera. I'll say something when I've got something to say. Okay. Um, so yesterday... <laughs> <laughs> Carry on. There were there were many people uh, at this conference. I interviewed um, the the evening entertainment. I was too knackered by this point. I was doing like sixteen hour days emceeing. So the, the the final oh, days. It started early, did it? It's not like a ten a.m. first talk lion. Conference. No, I was I was in. I was generally up at six, getting ready and set up by seven seven thirty, uh, and the night talks, which is one of these was Edward Snowden's one, finished, oh, finished at eleven. Yeah. So it was absolute flat out work. And Edward Stone is doing one of the night talks via video link from Russia, obviously. Um, so, uh, evening entertainment. I left that bit. Uh, Boney M and the Weather Girls. In the same act? Uh, no, but both both on stage. And I looked, I was like, that's, that's quite good. I didn't know they were still going. Is it all of Boney M? It's, it's the people who now have the rights to the name Boney M. Whoa. And one of the Weather Girls' daughters and someone she's singing with who are now the new Weather Girls. So it's like Sugar Babes, then? It is basically... Yeah, it's basically... Anyway. British reference. <laughs> Many British references. <laughs> right. This is leading up to a really good punchline about Edward Snowden, I promise you. Okay, then. Carry on. <laughs> Edward Snowden is being interviewed as part of a panel on the second night I'm there. And on the panel are a couple of people from the web hosting industry, because that's what the conference is about. Uh, Edward Snowden, live via video link, and a man called Max Schrems. I think I'm mispronouncing his last name. Okay. He is the man who sued Facebook and got Safe Harbor taken down. What's Safe Harbor? So Safe Harbor is the agreement by which US companies could uh, get around European data protection, not get around, but agree with European data protection laws. So Facebook could say, yes, we're based in the US, but we can transfer European citizens' data out of Europe because we're ticking all these boxes yeah. and that's fine. Uh, and that lasted until Edward Snowden leaked all the stuff about the, what the NSA was doing uh, and what the US government was doing. Was it the NSA? It was the NSA. I think it was. Um, uh, among the the other countries Check as the well. person who's remembered his research. Um, leaked all that. And all of a sudden, Max Streams uh, and a team of people goes, hang on, that means that safe harbour agreement doesn't make sense anymore. Mm. And then proceeded to sue Facebook, win, and suddenly that agreement fails. Which means that unless the EU can get something to replace it very quickly, Facebook won't be able to process European citizens and US citizens' data together. Which basically means Facebook can't exist. <laughs> Along with, and everyone in that room um, is, in the in is in the industry that's having to deal with this. Anyone yeah. who's transferring data across borders is having to deal with this. So we've got him on the panel, and we've got Edward Snowden live via video. This is actually, I'm having to do a lot of research to put this together. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if you don't do any research, you've got nothing to talk to these I've people about. I had a lot of notes and a lot of questions. Um, and it worked. You know, the, the talk was good, but the setup was about an hour before. And we've got Edward Snowden, you know, checking in an hour earlier. We've got a big stage. And it's being live cast back to the main event with a, a thousand people watching it. As I say, can't show you the video. What I can tell you is the warm up question that I asked him. <laughs> you tell me this I'm before, sorry, carry on, I like it. <laughs> because we have to do something to test the line, and the same as what I'm filming with you. Mm. We never talk about what we're going to talk about before we talk about it. No, because then you've already spoken about it, and it's yeah, it's like it's 
scripted. Right. So I don't want to ask him any questions about this. Uh, and I don't think he wants to get them. So I need something to test the line. I need something to break the ice. It occurs to me that Edward Snowden is in Moscow. Well, actually, I don't know he's in Moscow. He's at an undisclosed location. The last I heard, Edward Snowden was living in Russia and Moscow because that's where last week tonight John Oliver went yeah, to that's, interview him. Yeah, that's right. So I don't actually know where he was because he was against a green screen. But on the assumption he's still in there, it was midnight Moscow time as I'm talking to him. So I'm making the assumption that Edward Snowden is at home against a green screen. Hmm. Um, it's just him laptop up at desk and... No, it was a proper setup, by the way. Okay. It was a proper camera, everything like that. And I think he had... I suppose um, all he does now is interviews, isn't it? Well, that's <laughs> it. That's, that's how he's going to be paying his, his rent and everything like that. He's, what else can you do? Um, so it's a head and shoulders shot of him. And he's got shirt on, everything like that, sitting down. And it just occurred to me that if I were Edward Snow and I had to take a video call from a conference at midnight, I would skip a few of the steps required to, to set up for that because I've got complete control over the situation. So there's hardly anyone in, there's just the, the MC of the conference, a couple of other people. I'm sat in a, sat in a stool, no panellists next to me, just, just talking. I said, Edward Snow, you don't, you don't have to answer this question. You don't, uh, you don't have to prove your answer to me. But if I were in your place, I know what I'd be doing right now. So, Edward Snowden, are you wearing trousers right now? <laughs> And to his credit, he said he was, but I didn't ask him to prove it. Did he laugh? And yes, he did. The and man I, can laugh. I made Edward Snowden laugh. <laughs> wow. That's a challenge in itself. That's an achievement. <laughs> he has answers for, every, for nearly every question he's asked, but I don't think anyone has ever asked him that via video link. There you go. That's about a 10 minute monologue about one thing I did. Hi, I'm here as well. <laughs> Next time, a 10 minute monologue and how he can get pictures from space from Matt. We tried it here. <laughs> Did it work? <laughs> Did, Did it bollocks? It bollocks. <laughs> <laughs>